hey there i hope you are doing good welcome to another video today we are going to solve an lld or a machine coding question from uber's front end in front end engineer interview as you can see this question was asked recently um to an st2 level in the uber's interview there are multiple questions over here uh, which i have um, already solved and uh, the question set is available on my website alpha.learnerspocket.com if you are preparing for your front end interview you can check out my um, website uh, you get company wise question set to practice your interview questions so coming back to the um, interview question the question reads as we have to render c shape squares uh, with the size of 25 pixel a row a square would have a border black and background color white keep space of 10 pixel between squares clicking on a square will change its color to green an unwinding process would start once all three squares are green it will turn them back to white in the reverse order of click unwinding should decolor boxes one by one with a delay of 1 second between them so this is the problem statement if you see the example here the squares are in a c shape and once we click on that they turn green and moment all the squares are clicked we do an unwinding in the order they were clicked so let's start solving this question i am using quotes on quote sandbox uh, you can practice anywhere you want so first thing i am creating is a count variable because we have to create c shape squares as mentioned in the problem statement c shape square and there should be only three squares so that's why i'm taking or defining a constant variable count and the first thing i'll do is we'll generate the squares in the c shape format so here i'm going to create a function const generate squares and to this i'll create the squares so const squares will be an array and then for let i equals to 0 i is less than count i plus plus what i'll do is in the squares i'll push the square so we can have a self close t over here and i'll give it the class name as square and then will return the squares at the bottom and here in the app let me clear everything and then i'll just invoke the generate squares this will generate all the three squares now we are seeing nothing over here because um, there is no style applied to this so let's go and apply some styles here i'll have square so in the problem statement it was mentioned that we should be having uh, squares of size sorry squares of size 25 pixel but just for the um, sake of this video and to have a greater picture i'll be creating a squares of the size 100 pixels so i'll keep the width as 100 height as 100 and then border as one pixel solid black so we are seeing all the three squares over here and now these squares are wrapped in app class so let me clear this let me rename this as square wrapper and here also i'll rename this as square wrapper and i'll say this display 
let's let's direction column and then gap of 10 pixel between each of the squares now the first and the last square so we have to keep them in an order of c which means the first and the last uh, square will displace um, and they will be right near to the middle square so for that i'll say that square colon first child and then dot square colon last child should have a margin left of 100 pixels so now we have a c shaped square now when on the click of this the color of this square should change to green so what i'll do is i'll create a active class here and i'll set the background color as green now when you click on any of these squares the color should change to green but the problem statement says that the moment all these three squares are green an unwinding process should start and that will reverse the or decolor the boxes in the same order that they were clicked so what i'll do over here is i'm going to create a stack to track the order in which the squares were clicked you state and by default it will be an array and here on the click of the button what i'll do is I will update the stack and to this I will have the existing stack and I will store the array index to track which of the square is clicked and here I will just update the condition and make sure if stack dot includes the current index then I have to add square and active otherwise just square simple manipulations so remember during the interviews you have to code fast and you have to make sure that uh, uh, things are working properly so you don't have to be super uh, nitty and gritty you just have to make sure that uh, things are working properly so if i click over here you can see that all the boxes are changing its color to green and to the square let me just update the cursor to pointer so that we can see that it is a clickable element now clicking this are changing the color once all the square items are clicked what we have to do is we have to start the unwinding process so here for unwinding i will be using use effect hook and recursion to do the unwinding because the unwinding has to happen after a delay of one second from the previous winding so i'll be using set timeout to cause the delay so let's import the use effect hook in which i'll do the recursion and do the unwinding and also the use ref hook to keep track of the timer or the set timeout so we'll be storing we'll be using use ref as a variable to store the timer id of the um, this um, set timeout so here let's define the use effect hook and to this let me add a stack as the dependency i'll also include count because um, count is the constant value or the number of squares that we are creating so i am using stack and count if stack dot length 
equals to equals to count then we have to start the unwinding process so i got the stock length to count and after this what i'll do is if we have reached this we start the unwinding now for unwinding i am using another state to track if the unwinding is currently in progress or not so here let me create a new state with the false and unwinding or set unwinding this will help us to keep track of if unwinding is currently happening or not so let me include the unwinding and set unwinding as a dependency and here we will see that if the stack length is equals to equals to count and if there is no unwinding happening then set unwinding to true so this will trigger the unwinding now to terminate the unwinding we'll set a base condition so our base condition will be if unwinding is happening and the stack dot length is equals to equals to zero then we have to set the unwinding to false again that unwinding is no more happening and then once the unwinding starts so if unwinding has started what we'll do is we'll create a timer so timer ref dot current let me define this over here so font timer ref equals to use ref and to this i'll pass null now to this um, reference variable we'll create a set timeout and this set timeout will be invoked after one millisecond and what we'll do is we'll create the clone of the stack we'll remove the last element from it So basically we are unwinding in the reverse order that's why we have removed the last element from this and so here it is count sorry for that and then we'll update the state with the remaining element so let me include set stack as well as the dependency and then finally we'll do the cleanup and we'll do clear timeout and timer ref dot current so after each update when the memory cleanup is happening we'll clear the timer id so this use effect will be invoked every time there is a change is in any of this dependency so if you see this what happens is the use effect is called and every time we check if the stack length is equals to count and there is no unwinding happening then we set the unwinding is true when the unwinding starts we create or trigger a timer that will remove the last element from the stack clone uh, sorry stack we create a clone of that we remove the last element from that and we again update the stack and this will continue until and unless unwinding is happening and the stack length has reached to zero or there are no elements then we stop the unwinding so if i save this over here and here let's say if i click this so you see the unwinding is happening in the reverse order now one problem over here is let's say if i click this and then if i click this back so this will keep on happening 
so this becomes an edge case like you want to check this with your interviewer do you want to handle this or not so the click like if the unwinding is happening do you want to um, you, you don't want to set the new item or click on this so for that here i'll add a check if not unwinding then only click on the so then only um, when and square is clicked then update the stack so when the unwinding process is happening you don't click this is the condition yeah so these small things we have to clarify during the interviews but now if i click this and when the unwinding is happening i click and nothing will happen so simple question to test how well you understand the life cycles of react how well well versed are you with handling the timers in react and then how do you do dom manipulations how do you conditionally update things so this would be around a 45 minutes interview round and um, this is how you could solve this i have similar interview questions um, asked in um, many front end interviews uh, in product based companies so if you are preparing for your interviews you can check out uh, alpha.learnsbucket.com my course it has all the machine coding questions the javascript questions data structure and algorithms that you would require to prepare for interviews um, the usp of this course is the system design questions i have 17 system design questions which is most available on any website um, that you can prepare from for your interviews if you have learned something new today um, please do share and subscribe on the video and to the channel uh, i'll see you in the next video with another interesting interview questions thank you for your time